Data is lost at an extraordinary rate. Some estimates suggest around 17% per year for data in ecology and evolution. There's all sorts of reasons why data gets lost. The only way to really archive data is to have it in a special data repository. Hi, my name is Diane Shrevastova. I'm a professor in the Department of Zoology and at the Biodiversity Research Centre at UBC. And since 2016, I've also been director of the CIEE, the Canadian Institute of Ecology and Evolution. So the CIEE is Canada's National Synthesis Centre, uh, which means that we fund uh, syntheses of existing data studies um, and ideas. So the Living Data Project is an initiative of the CIEE. It's a national program which seeks to archive legacy data sets in ecology and evolution, preserve them for the future, and to breathe new life into them through analysis and synthesis. Um, it's a training program as well, uh, geared at Canada's new generation of ecology and evolution scientists. There's been a revolution in open science. Um, so science now has the tools to be much more reproducible, and we have the tools to archive well into the future uh, important data. So this means for ecology and evolution that we have two gaps that we need to fill. The first gap is a training gap. So we have these new methods and we need to make sure that our graduate students um, are trained in these best practices. The second gap is actually not looking forward, but looking backwards. So there's lots of uh, ways that um, scientists can ensure that their data is properly archived. But this is just scientists who have the data skills, the data science tools to do this. There is also data that was collected decades ago, which is vitally important for Canada. Data which will set baselines for global change, data which establishes um, long-term patterns of population or ecosystem change, and that data is being lost. It's being lost because um, the researchers uh, may no longer be with us who collected the data, or they may have grown up in a generation which simply did not have um, the uh, modern data science skills to enable this. So what the Living Data Project does is to bring together these different generations of scientists so the graduate students that we are training right now on these critical skills, and then the researchers, often senior researchers, um, who are holding these legacy data sets. And through this partnership, uh, we make sure that we save the data. I was an intern for the Living Data Project, and I work along with uh, researchers from Environment Climate Change Canada, uh, Canadian Wildlife Service, and BCIT to consolidate a data set that they've been collecting for 25 years. The data that they are collecting in this project is of conservation importance because a lot of the species that are occurring in that inlet are decreasing their populations. Uh, at least the local winter populations are decreasing every year and they are trying to understand why and so this data is going to inform that for the future. When I first got the data I have at least four different Excel spreadsheets and 25 different years of data means 25 different ways of collecting uh, the data so it has many I would say dozens of different variables that needed to get uh, to a single format so it was uh, inconsistent. We have more than 70 different types of variables and we reduced those to seven. So I needed to work along with um, the researchers at Environment Climate Change Canada to reduce this to variables that were important for actually the long-term project. Um, I think it is the time for people to start understanding that the data we collect now is gonna be used in the future, not even by us, but with someone 50 years, 100 years, and you know, if we collect the data in a way that is consistent, that is clear, uh, it will be way more useful in the future.